So, so you were asking about the, um, you know, if, if the implant position is kind of a little, little bit out, you know, what, what yeah. the effect of that? Well, obviously, if, if the kind of the stem, so the bit, the, the, the bit that goes into the femur, to the thigh bone, you know, if that is kind of too long, if you like, then that can lead to the leg being too long. Mm -hmm. So a so leg length discrepancy is what we call it. It is something which can occur after surgery. Mm -hmm. Now, most surgeons would try and measure that during the operation. They would template, look at the x-rays and measure the x-rays beforehand and know kind of what they're planning to do. But sometimes you have to balance up this risk of dislocation mm -hmm. against a length. So, uh, so if you put the hip in the right length, it might be really quite sloppy. Um, and really a bit unstable. So you might have to make it a little bit long on purpose to make sure that it is appropriately stable. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty uncommon for the legs to be, you know, if, if that was an issue after surgery, pretty uncommon for that to be more than about a centimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd be really surprised at how many people have that level of difference even before the operation. Right, right. And, and don't notice it. Right. You know, it's surprising how often you, you, you see a patient in clinic, you know, even without any arthritis in the hip, and you measure the leg lengths, and it's, you know, five mil difference, eight a centimeter sometimes. But like, you know, I've never noticed that. But my, yeah, my trousers always seem a bit long on that side. But nobody's ever noticed, nobody's mentioned it, you know. Yeah. So, um, so leg length, you know, can, can, occur, after, can occur afterwards. Um, sometimes it's not noticeable. But, but in some patients, you know, they notice a really small difference. I mean, it, it's remarkable sometimes. You might have someone who has just a five millimeter difference and they really notice it. Um, whether that's because it, of the effect it has on the spine, if they've got a bit of a stiff back, mm. you know, it tilts them over a bit and then they have to compensate and then they really struggle with that. So there's lots of factors going on there. Mm. Um, most of the time, if it's a problem, you know, you can simply just have a, like a, a, an insert into the shoe. So mm. an insole lift up the other side yeah. um, to balance the balance them out and that, that that can be quite successful but obviously you know if it's if it's significant and it's it's a really big difference um, and again it might be something that, that the only way to resolve that is to to revise the hip uh, to take right. the implants out so yeah so so leg length difference um you know if if the hip is we talked about if it's too long if it's too wide um, then that can stretch the muscles quite a lot and, and people can have quite a bit of sort of pain at the side of the hip, really pain on lying and, and things like that. Um, so that can be a problem. Uh, on the socket side, if, if the angle of the socket is wrong, you know, that can mean that maybe the hip is more likely to dislocate because again, the, the ball isn't covered over by the socket as much and it's more likely to, to pop out. Well, and, and on the topic of, of leg length discrepancy, um, I've, I've got the impression. I don't know if this is if this is held up in in, in research and in and in, and in your experience, but I've kind of got the impression that it's not uncommon for people to feel as though the operated side is longer after surgery, particularly if there's been quite severe arthritis on that side. But that that it's actually a return to sort of more of a natural anatomy, and that it kind of settles settles uh, you know over over you know over the first weeks and and so on of, of recovery. Yeah, absolutely. It can definitely be a, a dynamic thing that changes with time. So particularly if you have someone who's had, you know, really quite severe arthritis, so the hip has actually shortened, they've lost bone in the hip yeah. and it's shorter before, you know, the muscles then also kind of shorten up a little bit. Yeah. And then when you put it back into the right length, actually that you kind of stretching out those muscles yeah. and actually that the, the patient can kind of feel that, you know, in the, that it, it they were kind of comfortable with it, not comfortable because it had pain, obviously, but kind of got used to that difference. And now you put it to the same length, they kind of feel a little bit overbalanced. But also there's this, there's this other issue where um, if, the, if the muscles are then very tight, the, the leg can be much more comfortable in, in a position where the, the knee is outwards, so we call it abducted. Because yeah. um, that, that takes the tension off the abductor muscles, the gluteal muscles. Mm -hmm. so, so if you've got too much tension, then the leg can be more happy to be kind of out to the side. But then because you can't walk like that, then what you do is you bring the other leg over to meet it. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with a very, you know, the pelvis goes from like this to like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then that makes the, the leg look, you know, massively long. Yeah. You know, so, so, so sometimes, you know, when I've seen patients in clinic and they say, well, it's all been great, you know, Dr. Board, but, um, you know, my leg's really long and, uh, you know, I went to see the physio and they, they said it was two inches, two, two inches long, you know, <laughs> like, you know, two inches is like almost impossible to do in, in surgery without, you know, um, 
doing something really strange. Um, so, so, so when you hear that kind of story, you think that that's a, that's a pelvic ubiquity problem. Right, right. Yeah, that level of difference is because the pelvis is, is really twisted. Right. And, and that, so it's that kind of thing which can really settle with time. Mm. So if it's a stretching out of the muscles, muscles are pretty good if they, if they have been the normal length and then they've stretched, then they've sort of contracted a bit because of shortening, they do quite well, you know, stretching again. So you put it in, and the leg goes over to the side, they feel it's really, really long, um, and if, give it enough time and it will come back. The danger is that someone gives them a, a shoe raise to try and compensate, and they end up fixing in that position. Right, right. So they, then, then, you know, six months later, you know, th there's no way you're going to get that hit back, you know, in the right position. Right. So it's quite important to identify those patients who have that problem because, you know, stretching exercises, working with your therapist, is, is the way through that. Um, and if you kind of have a, a shoe race too early, you know, then that, that can be a negative thing for the patient. Interesting. Interesting.